love it when the evenings draw in and you can come in and light the fire. And I think I'm probably um, idiosyncratic, but I do like writing by candlelight, and I really like sitting at this table, usually with four candles, and then I move them around. And it's great fun to be able to come in, in here and sit down and get books out of the bookcase, write up my diary. I started writing down, like I think a lot of people do, I bought so-and-so shrubs from wherever it was and then say where they've been planted. And there again, it's very interesting to see which shrubs and which trees have done the best and which ones have disappeared out of one's life altogether. People say that, you know, in the winter you can see the bones of the garden and they make a great deal of that. People come to Barnsley and they say, oh, we're so glad we've come today. This was happening last week. Oh, we can now see the shapes. And you can see the bones and you can see the shapes, but you can also see all the wonderful colors that go on. And blue sky and billowing white clouds, they all make up a huge happiness, really, for me. We must always remember that winter in England is probably four months of the year. So why not make your garden look as interesting as possible in winter time? In fact, when I'm designing a garden, very often the first things I put in are the evergreen shrubs, and particularly those that have got a good shape. But I love the garden in winter, just almost as much as I do in the summer. And it's, I find it's very satisfactory walking through and then each month has something slightly different because as autumn comes into winter, you get all the leaves falling and then the different shapes of the trees stand out. Just look over there and you can see wonderful silhouette of a birch and then you come further into the garden and instead of having borders that are two, three, four, five foot six high, you can absolutely see through them. And it's so exciting working in the garden in winter because things happen more slowly and you put your bulbs in and you have this marvelous feeling of anticipation and then suddenly come January and February you get wonderful snowdrops coming through and then in the wilderness we've put lots of winter aconites into the borders so you have suddenly you have this absolute glow of bright gold which is exciting and i love this um, the silhouettes of the lime trees with the red twigs on top of them Riding through the country lanes, I became aware how lovely the countryside is in winter, so why not my garden? Over the years, I've got to love winter more and more, but 40 years ago, I hadn't awoken to its beauty. We came to live here in 1951, and at that moment, we had four children, and so first of all, my thoughts were of looking after them and enjoying them. Because when you've got children, you've got to remember that they grow up so quickly. And if you don't enjoy them then, then they're going to become teenagers and then they're going to get married. So instead of doing the garden, I took care of them. And then my husband, David, said to me, you've got rid of all my mother's borders because we grassed them over because they were rather weedy. And then suddenly I knew that I had to get on with it. And this is the way that I was lucky enough to learn. Because here was this lovely garden of four acres and a bit, and wanting to have things done to it. 
And David saying to me, come on, get on with it. And slowly, I managed to get on with it, learning through reading, learning through digging and propagating, and through visiting other people's gardens and always taking a notebook with me wherever I went. David, who was a trained architect and then became an architectural historian, was always very keen that everything should be in good order. But we did share everything together, which was the great thing. And David would come home with plants in the back of his car. And then when we wanted to put a lovely path underneath the Burnham Walk, the boot of his car was always filled with pebbles because at that moment he was working down on South Wales. And those were the days when you were allowed to pick up pebbles off the beach. I don't think you are now. And he made this path, pebbles set in a mixture of cement. He actually wasn't particularly keen or knowledgeable about plants. And he was quite funny because when he was walking around the garden and visitors asked him the name of a plant, I said to him, you must never say you don't know. If you don't know, make up some absurd Latin name and people will believe you. Sadly, David died in May 1984. Although he might not have remembered their names, he loved the winter flowers. These are the Helleborus orientalis hybrids. Basically, they come from Greece and from Turkey, but they actually do well in England. Here we've got them growing right on the ground, so it's quite difficult to see them. I love to have them growing on a raised bank so you can look up into their faces. And they come in these wonderful colours. Here we've got this purple with marvellous deeper purple spots to it. And then you have the white ones, which are lovely. Look at those. I mean, so what could be more exciting and beautiful than that? But what people don't seem to realise is the fact that these actually are the sepals, not the petals. The petals are these funny little things inside here, and those, of course, are the stamens. Anyhow, they are so beautiful. If you have a heavy fall of snow, it completely changes the dimensions of the garden. If it's, if it's really heavy, then the bushes, instead of being upright, probably become horizontal, and it changes their shape altogether, and you look out and you think, gosh, isn't that beautiful? But when you've had just a sprinkling of snow like we've had today, again it changes it, but it doesn't change the dimensions, it just changes the colour. I've always said that white is an important colour in borders, and so maybe white is an important colour sometimes on the lawn. And here today we've had this sprinkling, and it's really made lots of things look very exciting, particularly the aconites up the drive. I notice that they're bordered in white now. And you get the snow lying on the tips of the twigs and the leaves, and they all shine and scintillate, it's lovely.